Today's show. Salon owners are some of the most amazing people on planet Earth. The only problem is sometimes their hearts are so big and they give so much of themselves to their staff and guests that it creates unintended consequences. Our goal is to change the industry by elevating the way the rest of the world sees salons, spas, and barbershops and give it the credibility that it truly deserves. This is the Salon Owner Evo Revo Show. Today's podcast is brought to you by Salon Scale, allowing you to charge by what you know, not by what you feel. So here's one of the things that I think for a lot of people, they get tripped up on, Doug, and I, I want to get your perspective on this. Is I, think, I think so many people get overwhelmed and they're little voice runs their life, right? Every single day, their little voice trips them up, throws a wrench in their day and can get in the way. And you did a, um, we do something called a daily boost and you did a daily boost today that a lot of people were excited about because you were talking about it. I, I wanna make sure we talk about that on today's podcast. And it's all about this little voice concept, yeah? Yeah, so I think first of all, I need to you know, talk a little bit about what the little voice is. And, and yeah. basically it's, you know, it's a program that your subconscious creates to handle a situation. And, you're, and you're, your subconscious doesn't think things as good or bad, it just says things are. So if you're not conscious about what you're putting in there, you're gonna end up with just a, a knee-jerk reaction of how, how what this situation comes up, this is how I'm gonna handle it in the future. And usually that has a lot of emotion attached to it. And we know where our emotions are high, our intelligence is low, uh, so we need to be careful uh, about what we're putting into or allowing to go into our subconscious or our little voices. Uh, so by definition, you're sometimes not aware of your little voice because it lives in your subconscious. Your subconscious creates rent, those things. Rent free, by the way. It lives in there yeah. rent free, doesn't it? So, you know, it, it's, and, and it, it has its purpose. I mean, that's, you know, it, a lot of things happen to your subconscious. You don't have to consciously think about things. It, it gives you shortcuts. That's why I always call them programs, these little programs that your subconscious creates. Uh, but yeah. they're not always the best programs because it just says this was, this was our reaction, this is how we're going to handle this in the future uh, without doing the proper uh, methodology that we'll probably talk about a little bit today on how to keep the bad little programs from getting put in your subconscious because they will sabotage you day in and day out if you are not aware of them. Totally. And, and by the way, if, you, if you've if you got just a few little voices that you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, would you do me a favor and just comment and say little voices? Because I think I, I think that that little voice can be the thing that either, you know, pats you on the back for a job well done or can be something that will just take you out of the kneecaps. And, um, you know, our, our mutual friend and mentor Blair Singer wrote an entire book called Little Voice Mastery, How to Win the War Between Your Ears in 30 Seconds or Less and Have an Extraordinary Life. Dang, that's a long title. Uh, but the idea is is that that uh you know that book was was really helpful for me i mean i read that whenever it came out i remember i got one of the first copies of the first batch of books man probably 10 plus years ago maybe a little bit more and and that the tools in that book because there's 21 techniques the very last chapter in that book has 21 different little voice mastery techniques um and it's it's uh it, it's awesome he's actually doing a whole uh study with us for those of you guys that also watch our beautiful minds podcast um blair's gonna do a 21 day challenge in our beautiful minds program uh, that talk that takes you through all of these little voices and talks about them but one of the ones that is in there is this technique doug called debriefing and it's how do you debrief yourself and how do you actually get control of that little voice so in your mind what like there there are hundreds of places that we use a debrief and i have to say doug for me like the number one little voice mask technique that i use well I, sh I shouldn't say that i have one on my wrist every single day uh, this says right on here, it says celebrate all wins. That's a little voice mastery technique. Like I want you guys to know, like I am that crazy. Like that's how in insanely helpful those techniques are. That's probably the first one. The second one I use most often is this debrief technique. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the technique. If you debrief it, you have time to walk through it. So you have time for your emotions to come down and time, yeah. time to look at what really happened. And then put in how you would handle that in the future. What did you learn so that you can either... It's just, you know, so I guess walking through the debrief, it's like, you know, you know, what happened, what worked, what didn't work, and what did you learn? I right. Mean, I think, you Pretty know, basic questions. Yeah. But I think when you actually walk through that, and I think sometimes we go, oh, that's just too easy. It's too, it's like, it's a lot of power to it wherever you walk through it because it will, instead of, if you don't, your subconscious is going to grab that situation 
and say, okay, this happened, this was the thing, this were the emotions attached to it. Now the next time that happens, we're going to pull all that back up because we know this from experience. If you take a, yeah, if you do I, a debrief, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, by the way, if, you, if you've got some little voices, would you do me a favor and just say little voices in there? Uh, because I think I think just in the comments, like just chat in the comment and just drop in little voices. Um, but I think one of the things, Doug, to your point is, is like it's very simple. And when people hear it, I think I think this is what happens. I think people say I already do that mm -hmm. even though they don't. Right. It, I, I think about doing it. So therefore I did it. <laughs> right. Never, it's like, it. oh, I always I always say what didn't work. And then uh, I handle the problem. And I'm like, no, no, no. Like let's let's rewind back for just a second, right? Let's rewind back and just say, look, the question is what happened? So if you weren't there, you need to know what happened. Then what worked, what didn't work, and what'd you learn? Now, the reason why you start with what worked is because everybody's little voice immediately, like you, you're all guilty of this one. Do me a favor and comment guilty if you're guilty of this one, is when something happens, especially when it's negative, Doug, if something happens and it's negative, people usually go, <clears throat> well, you know, we need to change next time, or here's what got screwed up, or this is the problem, or no, no, no. Like all of a sudden, everybody goes into what can I correct or what can I fix, especially for us guys, right? As guys, we're like, what can I fix? What can I fix? So we always know, want to know well, what didn't work. Oh, this broke, this broke, this broke. And I, I have debriefed thousands of people using this process, thousands and thousands of people. And literally every single time without fail, everybody will immediately say, well, what worked? And people are like, uh, and they just go blank because people are not used to trying to think of something that's good that happened because your mind is trying to fix everything. Yeah, and the thing is, is getting in there is like, because in every situation, usually something about it worked. And that yeah. shifts your mind. You go to the positive side first so that you don't go barreling down that negative road. Because, mm -hmm. and the idea is like, what, when you learn, what I learned, it's like, what did I learn about what worked that I could do more of that? And then what did I learn about what didn't work so I could avoid that? Mm -hmm. And then coming up with your plan, then you're creating your program for how you're going to handle it next time. And so that just leaving it to your subconscious because your subconscious will create a program. It's what it does. It says we need to get through life. I need to create as many shortcuts as possible. So next time I walk in the back of my business and people aren't doing this, I'm going to ride everybody up. I'm going to blow everybody up <laughs> and it's all their fault. They're all evil people. You know. Yeah. Instead of going through say, say, hey, what, you know, I walked in and this happened. So what what worked about that? What were, what were some good things that were going on? And right. then what were some other things that were going on? And so it's like, you know, let, let's go through and figure out uh, what that is. And so now that I know when I go through there, then I can be more productive. Because the problem is, if your little voice learned that one thing under high emotion, when that situation happens again, you're going to go right back into high emotion. And right. you're going to keep well, it's, it's you're gonna, yeah, you're gonna sorry, keep man. the We're, same wall, right? Yeah, they're they're emotional triggers, and I think you know one of the things that I I, I refer to that as is something called emotional stamping. Is like when if you think of it this way, like everybody's familiar with like I mean this is this is like farmer status I'm gonna get into here, but like I grew up on a on a farm, okay? So I was I was I grew up in a really small town uh, where the FFA Future Farmers of America that's the big deal at the school, and like when you think of like cattle, cattle get branded, right? With like a big hot poker. It's like, and it like burns a symbol into the cow. Okay. Uh, I, I never did that. I'm just telling you, I'm familiar with said methodology. Uh, where are my farmers at? Give me a shout out in the comments. Anyway, um, when you, uh, have a hot poker and you brand the cow, it leaves a mark. And I think what happens is when your emotions get really hot and they run really, really hot for you, what can happen with your subconscious is that you actually emotionally stamp or you emotionally brand an idea onto your body. Now you can't physically see it. Like obviously no one was rocking around with branded, but if we did, if you were like, if I could actually see Doug that like one day you had a really bad break, some ex-girlfriend, there's this brand on your shoulder that says, don't trust women named Tina or whatever it is. I don't know if you've ever dated a Tina, but you get what I'm saying, right? Is like you decide that, uh, you know, all, all women are this way or that, you know, all all uh, if you were in a, in a business or in the salon, you might say uh, never trust, you know, never trust new staff members or never trust people that uh, ha come with their own book of business. And like what happens is you get emotionally stamped or emotionally branded with these like hot poker scars, if you will, that, that keep you in this spot. And it actually starts filing away your pain, your trauma, your drama, and all of these things 
because if you don't actively pay attention to it, which is what we're talking about today, if you don't actively pay attention to it, you're just going to brand yourself with a bunch of really poor lessons that are not going to help and serve you in the future. Right. And, 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 and what happens is you start reinforcing that because that, that little voice program jumps up, brings the yeah. emotion back and just reinforces what you were already starting. So after a while, it, no, that's the way it is. You don't understand it. Say, now I yeah. understand you've never taken time to debrief it, to figure out what you need to learn to get past it. I mean, that's the key I, to it. You've got to learn how to handle the situation differently uh, and, and then move past it. Uh, that That's it, it, intentionally putting a program there for when this happens, this is how I'm going to control myself, this is how I'm going to you know, enter the environment. And then before long, that's not happening anymore. And it's not that emotional trigger anymore. Yeah. By the way, when we come back, we're going to talk about some other places that are maybe more uncommon for you to use a debrief uh, to help you wrap your mind around kind of where this can become valuable. Doug and I will talk about where to use it, especially inside the salon. How do you use it with other people and what you can do to actually make sure you get the most leverage out of others so they actually can figure out how to solve their own problems. All we come back, we got to go pay some bills. So we're going to run to a quick break from our sponsor and we'll be right back after this quick message. Hey, HPSA listeners. Let me ask you this. Are you tired of not knowing what your hair color is costing you on every appointment and watching it chew up your profit? Well, with Salon Scale, we take the guesswork out for you. Using a mobile app paired with a Bluetooth scale, Salon Scale will tell you exactly what your color is costing you on every bowl mix down to the ground. As you mix, Salon Scale will also digitally store your formulas and track how much product is being used in real time so you can manage your inventory, cover your expenses, and generate more profit in your salon. Use promo code HPSA10 to get 10% off an annual subscription. Salon Scale, the new standard for mixing color. So we're talking about today the power of using a tool called a debrief. And a debrief is a very simple set of questions, right? And all, all they are is what happened, what worked, what didn't work, what'd you learn? And again, starting with the positive first, then moving to negative, then going to course correction. And one of the things we've done, in fact, Doug, we, we actually did this in uh, our team debriefs now, right, inside the company, is we actually just say, um, uh, what can we upgrade? So we say what worked, what didn't work, and what can we upgrade? We've kind of modified it slightly from its original form because, you know, we, we realize sometimes like, well, what, you know, uh, what can we improve? Or what can we make better? Like, that's good. But we just say, what can we upgrade? Because oftentimes we'll go, look, everything went really, really well, but what can we upgrade? And what it does is even when everything goes perfect, we then can go, yeah, but there's an opportunity for us to upgrade this and upgrade that and upgrade this. So where are some ways, Doug, that you, or where are some places that you've used a debrief inside your salon. I can talk about some uh, one that I heard the other day that was really, it was trick. I'd never heard of using it here. And I was like, that's a brilliant place to use it. But where do you guys use debriefs inside the salon? And barbershop, I should say, and barbershop. I always feel like I, I add, the poor <laughs> barbershop is like the the extra thing that I never say. So, and the barbershop for all you And the barbershop. Yeah, Sean that's would right. appreciate that. That's right. Um, yeah. So, I mean, a lot of different times, you know, in uh, our, our, actually our PDMs, our one-on-ones are basically yeah. set up. We use the debrief format uh, going through there so that that helps them discover, you know, over the past month, you know, how did it go? What worked? What went well? What didn't work? You know, so what could we do differently and how can I help you in what you're thinking? And that's a, that's an amazing technique for um, a personal development meeting or a one-on-one, -on -one, whichever one you prefer to call it. Um but then I, I think a lot of it, even just with yourself, I mean, I, I catch myself all the time, uh, me and, and my wife, Alice, you know, it's like, you know, it'd run in thing if I hit something that was a, a, an emotional trigger or I felt some high emotion and I walked through it and I was like, so what, what exactly just happened there? And, you know, what was, what was good about it? What was things that I could change and then programming it right so that I don't get into there. Cause to your point a while ago too, sometimes you got to shake yourself. You can build a, the little voice of complacency Yeah. Uh, that you're just like, okay with that. And it's like, well, is that really where I want to be? You know, couldn't I, couldn't this be better? Uh, and then how could it be better? So meetings with managers, um, is it, or any time, anytime something happens and there's some high emotions, uh, about involved with it, we'll bring the people involved and we'll debrief it together. Uh, and I think the power of that too, is it takes a lot of the accusations out of it. Mm -hmm. And we talk about the situation 
and not attacking people. We talk about the situation and then we you know, actually talk about how we could handle it differently. Is that that's the that's the thing that people really don't usually get to is how could you actually do this differently? Because uh, I know a lot of salon owners, you know, when they're trying to train up uh, uh, managers and, and, and lead people and stuff like that, they'll get frustrated and say, oh, well, I may as well just I just need to take that back and I'm just going to have to do it. Mm-hmm. Instead of walking through a debrief and saying, okay, what's working with what we're doing? What's not working? And then what could I modify to get these people right. up to speed to where I want them to be? Because I mean, that's so, a that's a wall. That's why people get stuck. They keep they keep taking things back instead mm-hmm. of figuring out how to grow someone through it and where are how could they do things differently to help that person grow properly. So super important distinction here. I want I want all of you guys to get this. Okay, is that. When you do a debrief, what worked, what didn't work, what'd you learn? This is not for you to tell them, here's what I think worked, here's what I think didn't work, and here's what I learned. It's for you to ask the question, hey, Doug, what worked, what didn't work, and what did you learn? Because what happens is you're, I I want you to get that you're you're working to improve the 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 critical thinking skill of the person that you're debriefing. Now Doug's talking about debriefing yourself, right? So sometimes we debrief ourselves, but one of the most powerful ways is to debrief each other and say I'm going to debrief you on this situation and figure it out. Like Doug and I after every big event that we do, whether it's a, an event for somebody else, it's an event for us, like we do our own internal team debrief where we say, "Hey guys, so as a team, what worked?" What didn't work? What'd you learn? And I do my best, by the way, as as a leader in an organization, and Doug, I know you do this too, man, is that when you're saying what worked, your job as a leader is to come up with as many things as what worked as possible for your team. Because guess what? They're going to be, they're going to be resistant to it. They're going to be like, well, let's get to the what didn't work so we can just move on with our lives. Your job is say, hey, I really appreciate, you know, Caitlin, when you did that, or hey, Tara, I hope I, that that was really amazing, or Molly, you did this, or Haley, you did this. Shout out to the team, by the way. Just giving you guys some love on the podcast. But the goal is, is that I want to say, here's all the great things that I saw that were standouts to me, because most people are not good at coming up with those. Then when you get to the didn't work, my guess is you as the leader have got a freaking laundry list of stuff that you want to say. This is your opportunity. <clears throat> this is for Jason, to practice restraint. Mm-hmm. Listen to what the team says. Because if I say, damn it, Doug, when you didn't do this right, and he briefed you by telling you what it is, that's very different it, than Doug going like, you know what, man? Hey, I made a mistake on this, and I'm going to clean it up next. I'm like, if he says it himself, or whoever on the team says it themselves, instead of I'm saying it to them, Holy mother, that is one of the best things you could ever have is somebody recognize their own fault, their own issue, and then they self-correct. Like who doesn't want their team to self-correct, you guys? If you've ever said, I wish my team would self-correct, that's why you got a short circuit. That's why you will start reprogramming. When you ask these questions in this order, short circuits a little voice and it starts to reprogram and rebuild it in a way that they actually are doing it themselves and they become smarter every day. Don't you want your team to be smarter? Yeah, I mean, that's the, the, the key thing there. It's, it's, and once you get good with this for your team, once they get used to it, people will self-identify saying, you know, I could do this better because they know it. Yeah. the team. Yeah. And it's not as much finger, finger pointing because that will in the beginning. So just be prepared. There's going to be some finger pointing start off with, well, this person screwed this. this. Like <laughs> people start to take on ownership. So I think yeah. it's the two things if you're the one leading the, the debrief is one, don't be afraid of silence. I think yeah. that's the biggest things people get squirrely about right let it sit let people think you know just encourage it to come out uh so because if you if you bite that silence off you pinch it off then it's right before someone was about to bring out something either that was really good that worked or that was something they really needed to work on so don't be afraid of silence yeah that's a I just want to hit that point because I've seen that happen, right? Is you're like, okay, did anything work? And you're like, one, two, okay, nothing else, and we'll just move on then. And you're like, whoa, whoa, like give it a second, like let it breathe, let it breathe, because people will cre- they'll create answers. Yeah, so it's, it's don't be afraid of silence. And then also, if you're the one leading it, let it come from them. Your job is to pull it out of them. And the first yeah. couple times are going to be a little wonky and a little uncomfortable. But once your team gets comfortable with it and they learn what it is, that this isn't uh, an insurrection or a, 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 not an insurrection, a, um, a what do you call it, a, 
a persecution or anything like that. We're not looking to oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A- attack Investigation, people. A grilling yeah. session. Yeah, it's sure. not like, okay, who, who are all, I need you all to admit what you did so we can correct you harshly. Uh, that's not what this <laughs> is. You know, it's about how do we improve? How do we improve individually? How do we improve as yep. a team? Uh, so when you do it right, then your team starts to look forward to them, uh, yeah. especially if results come out of them. Again, if you're debriefing with your team and you then don't do anything with it, then yeah. it's going to frustrate people. <laughs> Same thing <laughs> if you do a, a debrief with yourself. <laughs> if you don't change once you've done it, if you don't say, yes, these are things I need to change in the way I'm doing, then it's not really going to help you that much. Yeah, and and by the way, <clears throat> we were talking about this because I was just doing uh, – we do a, a weekly – or a, a bi-weekly session, an open coaching call for something we do called our Million Dollar Salon and Spa Program. It's for whether you want to get to your first half a million or your first million inside a salon. Um, we do this program. It's a six-week training session where over the course of six weeks, we give you not only this one tool like Debrief, but we give you six uh, six sessions where there's about 10 tools each session. So it's like 60 different tools that you can use inside the salon. Everything from how to debrief, uh, how do you actually coach your team, how do you handle your marketing, how do you have one-on-one meetings, how do you hire the right staff? How do you set up a code of honor? There's a million things that we do inside there. Well, I, I just, it's not a million, it's 60. Like I just said, around 60 things that we do. Uh, and if any of you guys want information on our million dollar salon spa program, uh, do me a favor and just say million in the comment section. Or if you're randomly driving around, listen to this in your car, uh, go find us on Facebook or on Instagram, send us a DM and just say a uh, million dollars and we'll know what you're talking about. I won't confuse it and think that you're trying to send me a million dollars. You're some Nigerian prince that has a million dollars that you need to uh, get out of the country by getting my social security number. I will know that you're talking about the million dollar salon spa program. And I'll give you the details because I think for so many salons, Doug, is they're, they're trying to figure out what they need to do and they get caught up in some of these ideas around you know, debriefing and how to do it. And, it, and it's, it's, I just want to say this, it's not your fault. Just nobody's ever taken the time to teach you this stuff. And I think sometimes what we teach inside the academy becomes so, it's like, it's so simple and it's so basic, but yet it's so profound just because of one tweak or one shift or one change. And hopefully you hear that as we're talking, it's not just about the questions, it's about the way in which you ask them. It's when you ask them, it's how you ask them, which leads me to the very last thing that we're going to wrap up here is one really uncommon place to do this debrief that I just thought was brilliant. I just never heard it before. And I was like, that's a really a good thing. Is somebody on the Million Dollar Salon Spa program that I was on uh, on Wednesday with, we did Monday and Wednesdays. And um, they said, you know, I'm gonna start debriefing my guests. I'm like, what do you mean debriefing your guests? And they're like, well, I mean, when they come and sit down in my chair, you know, six weeks later, I'm gonna say, hey, so what worked about your hair since last time I saw you? Was there anything that didn't work? about your hair and, and what'd you learn? Like, what'd you learn about styling it? What'd you learn about how it is actually working the way you want it to? Like, how's it going? I'm gonna just sit and genuinely listen to them. And I was like, I've never really thought about using it like that. I've always I've always thought about it as this like internal, you know, team-based thing that you wanna talk to your team and debrief them. But they're like, no, I'm gonna start debriefing all my guests. And I was like, that's freaking brilliant. So I'm yeah. just saying it, there, you don't be afraid to use that everywhere. Uh, and I've used it for probably close to whatever it's been now, 10 years or how many years I've, I've known about that tool, 10 or 12 years. And I find new ways to use it basically weekly. If you want to start breaking through barriers, then start yeah. using this technique personally and professionally. And you'll yeah. start breaking through barriers. You'll start moving forward and start living the life that you're meant to live instead yeah. of having your little voices sabotage you all the time. It's a great tool to break through those walls, break those barriers. Right. So. I, I challenge you all, start today. Use it somewhere today, either yeah. in your personal or business life. Yep, absolutely. And by the way, if you want to just get some more tips and some free goodies from us, uh, I just want to point you over. We have a free salon owner Facebook group uh, called Profitable Salon Owners. You can join that group for free. We've got a free gift for you inside the group once you join, which is called our Social Media Play Day. Uh, it allows you to uh, get access to some really cool tools to help you basically spend one day to create all your social media for the entire month. It's a really incredible tool and you get it for free just for joining the group. So if you want access to that, uh, do me a favor and just say group in the comment section and we'll get you over all the details. You can join our group and we've got a lot of other free resources. If you go to highperformancesalon.com, tons of tools, tons of resources, or if you just want to ask us a direct question and see your question answered on the podcast or maybe in a video, uh, send us a DM, send us a message and we'll be happy to talk with you. Thank you so much for being on today. As always, Doug, thank you for being here on the Evo Revo Show. You guys have a great week. Thanks, guys. See you later. 
Thanks for listening to the Evo Revo podcast. Today's podcast was brought to you by Salon Scale, allowing you to charge by what you know, not by what you feel. Please subscribe, leave us a review, and you can always get more information, including show notes and the video episodes at EvoRevoPodcast.com.